Hey guys, this is Sean with TrekCred. Today I'm taking you along as I head out to do some off-roading and photography. I'm headed to a place I call Mars. Well, it's not really Mars, but it sure could fool you if you didn't know any better. This place truly is out of this world. The landscape is amazing, and the terrain is easy to wheel. Well, unless it's a muddy mess as it was this day. Excellent place to explore and shoot some photography. Today I'll show you some photography techniques including scouting out great shots, shooting, and editing. Let's go. Okay, I have just parked the truck. I've got a pretty fun shot lined up here that I want to shoot and the sun is just barely starting to uh, go down. It's probably about an hour until sunset. Alta is in need of a little break anyway, so I'm gonna let her get out and run around. It's a little muddy out. As you can see, all of my windows are just caked and blobbed with all sorts of mud. Even my hood, the roof, everything is muddy, but we need to get out and get some fresh air and it's a pretty epic shot that we want to capture here. So let me take you out and show you how we're going to set this up. What I'm trying to do is trying to line up the Jeep with the mountain in the background. So I want that mountain in the background to be kind of towering over it and then um, have the Jeep kind of positioned so I can see a little bit of the side. Got the front wheel tilt just a little so I can see a little bit more of the rim on the driver front side. And what I really like about this spot right here is there is a little kind of wash out right here and I'm thinking that'll let me kind of get my camera a little bit lower maybe I can blur out some of the foreground with some of these plants a little bit of the the dirt and then I can focus on the Jeep Okay, I have all of my photos imported into Adobe Lightroom and I've kind of gone through and organized them and started to mark them in a way that um, kind of indicating which ones I like um, with different color codings and star ratings. And I have one particular pose that I'm really liking and I have three different kind of light variations. So I shot this first one when the sun was not quite down yet. And so the sun's a little bit harsher. Some of the shadows, um, the contrast between the light and the shadows is a little bit harsher. And then as the light just was barely, the sun's just barely going down over the mountain. And then after the sun had already set. And so three completely different kind of feels with the lighting. And I kind of like all three of them. But in this uh, video, I'd like to show you how to edit this center one right here. And let's go ahead and just dive in and um, see how we did this. Okay, what I did is I created a virtual copy of this so that I could have like a, a new blank picture to actually edit. First thing we'll do is go into the develop tab. And my very first thing I like to do, and I don't know, this is just me. I like to kind of crop it and kind of get that, that cropping um, just right. And I'm usually always doing these for Instagram. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a one by one, a square. And you can kind of play with the cropping how you see um, see what works best for you. Um, you know, rule of thirds would be, you know, like your, you know, one, one way of doing rule of thirds is, is to kind of have your horizon line or this land line, you know, kind of use that on this bottom line here, or, you know, you could put it up on the upper line if, if we had that and we can't do that. 
You can also um, offset it a little if you want. You could bring that just over so that this Jeep's a little bit more in this, this, this kind of corner realm over here. This particular image lends itself very well just to be perfectly centered though, uh, with this high peak up here, Jeep here in the middle. And so I really like having like the land line right here, bring that down just a tad. I like to be able to show some of this blurred foreground here. And so we'll have a little bit of the blurred, we'll have that line, the Jeep right in the center, and then this, this ridge kind of coming up here over the top. So I like that cropping, go ahead and click close and that's kind of a great starting point for us. Now I'm just going to go into the um, kind of basic exposure, contrast, highlights, blacks, whites, and things like that, and just start playing with things to see what looks right. Um, one thing I like to do just straight up out of the gate is sometimes just, just um, bring down the highlights just a tad. I always feel like the highlights are a little bit harsh and so I'm going to bring those down and you can kind of just play with it to see what looks best. I'm going to bring those right down to around 30. Next I might actually just play with my whites and my blacks. One little tip on the keyboard, I'm on a Mac right now um, so I'm using the option key. You can also hold down I think if you're on a PC I think it's the alt key and so I'm going to hold that key down. And now when I slide this, you see it, it turns black. If I start sliding it, it'll, whenever it shows white or whenever it starts showing the color like that, that means that color is actually a white or it's, it's overexposed. And so as soon as it starts showing that color, that means the sky now is overexposed. And so I just wanna back that off until that just barely turns away. And that'll give me kind of the brightest point before it's exposed, overexposed. And I can do the same thing with the black. And with the black, I usually go a little bit more and make things true black. And if you want a different feel, like if you want it to feel a little bit more dark, there's nothing wrong with, with backing that white off and making the image just a little bit darker. That's just fine. It's just kind of personal preference and what kind of look and feel you're, you're going for. And so I'm gonna put this back up right around mid 50s to 60, right in that range. Okay, next um, I like to play with the, the shadows just a tad. And I'm gonna just boost those up just a, just a little bit here. Um, once again, just kind of personal preference. I'm gonna put it right around 50. And then my one of my little, I don't know, one of my signature moves, if you will, is I always like to have a strong focus on my vehicle. And so one of the things I like to do is I boost this clarity down just a little. I'm gonna go extreme just to show you what clarity does. See how everything kind of goes fuzzy? And if I go all the way the other way, it makes everything really sharp. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the whole photo just down a little bit. That's around 20. Actually, I'm gonna back that up just a little bit. Maybe around 15, 16 in that range. So I'm just gonna make everything a little bit softer. I'm gonna come up here and do a mask. So I'm just gonna click on that icon and I like to just do a radial gradient. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just draw that radiant, radial right over the whole center of the photo here. Mainly the, the vehicle, but I'm gonna boost it out just a little bit more past the vehicle as well. Um, and then if you, like see the little mask box here, if you just click that show overlay, now it's hidden. It's still there. It's just the red's hidden so that you can actually see what you're going to do. Now I'm going to actually go in and boost those shadows just a little bit more of the vehicle. Now I'm going to go extreme to kind of show you what this does. Now if you go too much on this, it's going to look like you have a, drew a circle around your vehicle. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of it, maybe around 30. And then I'm going to go back to my clarity. And I boosted that down to, I think it was around 13 or 15, somewhere in that range. So to make it kind of go back to normal, how the photo was originally shot, I need to go back to that same number. Or I could even go a little bit past it and that'll make the, the Jeep and everything in the center just a little bit sharper, right? 
And now I can even play with this and see if, you know, maybe I do want to tighten that up a bit just around the vehicle. You can also um, toggle this little, this little uh, toggle right here, and that'll show you what that mask is doing. So no mask, no mask. So you can see the difference there, what we did. And I like where we're going with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click close. And this is probably a good point to just kind of double check where we originally came from and where we're at now. So if you click this little icon right down here, it shows you your original photo and then the edited photo. And so you can kind of see where we've come, where we, like where it was before. And there's really a, it's pretty subtle details. I mean, this photo was shot pretty good exposure. Everything is pretty good to, to start with. So there's not a huge change. And really what we've done is sharpened it. We've got the, the light and the darks balanced. And um, I think one thing I'd like to do is just warm it, warm it up just a tad. And so if you come up to your white balance, right now it's set to as shot. So however you shot it out of your camera. You could go to auto if you want. You can kind of play with these to see kind of what look and feel you want. Um, it was a little bit cloudy that day. And I kind of like just the as shot. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to warm it up a little on the temp little slider here. And see how we're just bringing a little bit more yellow in there. Warm that whole image up a little and I really like that look. Okay, one of the last things we're going to do now is we're going to go down into the uh, hue, saturation, and luminance. Love playing with the saturation. Some people like to boost their saturation of their images way too bright. And usually what people do is they'll come to the saturation like right up here and they'll just start bumping this up and see those rich colors now popping out. I think they look unbelievable. Um, I like to be a little bit more true to, to what the image really is. So I like to just come into each individual huge saturation luminance. Um, hue you can actually change like if you want the yellows to look more red or vice versa you can kind of like manipulate the colors saturation is do you want to make it like more saturated or desaturated like make it more black and white um, and then luminance is you can take all the yellows and make them brighter or darker and so I'm gonna go into saturation and first thing I'm gonna do is play with the blues and you can kind of go extreme just to see what they're doing and once again, I like to have the original just kind of held up here because this will keep me a little more honest. So the blues, I tend to bring my blues down a bit. And then I kind of like the warmness of this image where we're going. So I'm going to boost up my, my yellow and my oranges to see kind of what those are doing. And if I go too much, that just looks, this doesn't look right. And so I might just put it just like that. And you can just kind of slide each one to see if it does anything. If you, if you did something you don't like it, you can either manually kind of slide it back or you can just go Command Z and that just undoes, like it will do an undo on that. So if you slide it and you're like, nah, Command Z. All right. And a lot of these, there's not enough of that color in here to even do much. So it's really just this orange yellow, a little bit of the blue. Sometimes it's aqua, it's usually the windshield for the aqua, and I like to boost that up a tad. Okay, I really like where we've, where we've gone with this. Um, let's go ahead and just make it big and full screen and see what we got. Man, that sure looks sharp. Okay, well I think, uh, I think that's the image we're gonna go with. Um, actually, oh, there's one more thing I might do with this, just to tighten it up just a little, put a little more focus on the vehicle. I think I'm gonna go into the effects panel and the vignetting if you go one way it makes things lighter on the edges which i don't think anyone ever does that if you go the other way it makes it darker once again you want to be really careful here not to like spotlight the image and so i'll typically just do a tiny bit like around 10 to 15 range okay and now we can kind of look to see where we came from where we're at see if we like kind of the feel of it and I think that's what I, what I want to roll with.